Okay, HFO R1234YF. That is, I won't say it's the latest in the uh, refrigerants we have now, but it's uh, primarily automotive and automotive air conditioning refrigerant. A little background. My first experience with refrigerants was in about 1953 or 4. And I was a kid in my neighbor's house and we were playing with a refrigeration unit that his dad had taken out of his bar. We happened to open that thing up, open some sort of valve on it. And within 10 seconds, we were running for our lives. I believe it was sulfur dioxide. Now, sulfur dioxide is a really good refrigerant because as a liquid, sulfur dioxide is actually a lubricant. And it had about the same pressures, I think, as R12, something like that. Pretty easy to, to uh, refrigerant to live with except for the fact that it was a deadly poison. And that's why we were running for our lives. Okay, we stopped using those things in the 50s. Uh, we had them in household refrigerators and a bunch of stuff like that. What we moved to, and we'd actually moved into a lot of the, the CFCs and HCFCs in the 30s, but they were pretty expensive back then. And uh, we thought the CFCs especially were the greatest. They were non-flammable. Uh, they were non-toxic. Uh, ammonia comes to mind as far as toxicity. Great refrigerant, really good refrigerant. But one of the biggest problems with it was it was toxic. And uh, you couldn't use it in uh, theaters. In fact, there was a theater in town that advertised that they had air conditioning, because theaters, big thing, air conditioning, had to have air conditioning in the summer, and it used CO2. Uh, CO2 pretty much in its infancy of use back then uh, was really pretty nasty stuff to use because not not from toxicity obviously but it was uh, very very hard to work with because of the very high pressures you had to work with and they got rid of it as soon as they could get CFCs in there okay fast forward a little bit 87 Montreal protocols uh, we started getting rid of it because of the ozone depletion uh, potential of these things. So, and I'm not here to argue whether it should have been or shouldn't have been. It's just kind of a history. Well, then we, uh, R12, R12 was a heck of a good refrigerant. Uh, but it had a high ODP. So, we changed it to 134A. And looking at 134A when we did that, and yeah, it was a good refrigerant. And it's been a viable single uh, uh, chemical refrigerant. It's not a blend. Blends, oh God, I hope we get rid of blends. Uh, they've been a problem because they separate. But our 134A was a single chemical refrigerant. And I noticed at the time this GWP number, Global Warming Potential. Now, let's do some comparisons. CO2 is the worst global warming potential chemical we have in the atmosphere. It has a global potential warming potential of one. So why do we think it's the worst global warming potential? Because there's so much of it compared to all the rest. Uh, global warming potential for 134A was 1400 and I think 30. 
So I knew eventually we were going to be getting rid of this stuff. And that has happened. We now have our 1234YF. It has a global warming potential of 4. So it checks the box there. Efficiency is about the same as 134A. The biggest problem with, well not the biggest problem, but one of the problems with uh, our 1234YF is flammability. It is flammable. Now there's I think three ratings of flammability. It's A2. A1 is nothing. That would be uh, 134A, uh, it will not burn. 1234YF will burn. They say it's not as flammable, and there are ways that they can mitigate this, and I'm not going to try to go into all that. But uh, it is a flammable refrigerant. If you watch my videos, I've showed you a couple others that say they were A2, and they actually were fairly flammable. Plus, when you mix a flammable oil with the R134, or one, not one, 12, uh, 1234, if you mix oil with it, the combination can be quite flammable. Uh, Damler was doing a test in Germany and they had a video of this happening. It, it was an accident. It would, didn't happen on purpose. And the guy opens the hood and it doesn't really explode, but it does, it does a fairly fast flammability potential. At least in that case, it made quite the little flame. Uh, and for a while, Dambler was not going to use uh, uh, 1234 at all. They wanted to use CO2. By the way, why do we use CO2 as a, as a refrigerant? Uh, because it is non-toxic, non-flammable, and the global potential is one. That's why we use it. Had many problems with that refrigerator, but uh, maybe try to go into that another time. Here's the biggest problem with this stuff is right now it is about $55 per pound. Now, why is it $55 a pound? That's actually a little lower than it has been in the past. Uh, it still uh, is under patent. Uh, I mean, there's not one patent. There's never one patent on this stuff. There's a whole bunch of them. And some of them are going to run out, I think, in 2023. And so there will probably be some reduction in, in cost. Uh, the manufacturing process is actually fairly complicated, and uh, that's part of the expense of the refrigerant. Other refrigerants are hard to make too. Uh, R12 is hard to make. When we first started making it, it was very expensive and it was hard to make. Uh, last price I knew of R12 before they uh, started taxing it was a dollar a pound. R22 was two dollars a pound. And that's, you know, uh, contractor cost. This stuff's 55. I guess inflation's taking its toll, huh? Okay, is this going to be our end-all refrigerant now? Mark my words, it's not yet. <laughs> uh, we're going to get all changed over to this stuff. I know the automotive guys are having to do it now. It's illegal to change a 1234A back into a 134A. A lot of people do it anyway, uh, but because their their uh, efficiency and they're actually fairly compatible between the two. Uh, I haven't seen anybody do it uh, yet, 
but uh, with this cost here, and that's really a contractor's cost. So installed, this stuff's going to be 100 bucks a pound, maybe more. So uh, what makes it so great? The only thing that makes it great at all is the global warming potential. Uh, I think it uh, mixes with oils okay. Its efficiency cost for operation is is similar to 134A or 12. Actually, 12 is a little better than both of them. Should we have done this one? Well, Europe did it a number of years ago. Uh, they're more sensitive that, to that stuff than we are. Uh, of course, they little, live a little more concentrated together, too. I don't know. I've got a car that's got it. And, yeah, if, if there is a leak in the system, I'll, I'll take care of it. You can buy it in small cans, but I don't think it's available to the public. But uh, 134A is the only one that I know that's available to the public without a refrigeration license. Uh, but so far, that's what this, is, this has gone to is 1234A for automotive in the U.S. I think Australia is using R290, which is propane. Uh, I've always had this same problem that every refrigeration guy that's always had. We were so happy to get a refrigerant that was non-toxic and non-flammable, with the little exception of the CFCs. Uh, when they heated up, they turned into phosgene gas. That was a little bit of a problem, pretty big problem actually. Uh, but we were always against this flammability. And there are people that retrofit R22 systems to propane. And I hope I never have to work on one. I'm mostly retired now. So, uh, and I may experiment with some of them here to see if I can uh, determine, you know, how safe it actually is. But I mean, it's used as a fuel gas. So, yeah, it's A3. It's the most flammable. And I would hate to run into a system like that where there could be a source of ignition when I'm dumping the gas. Hopefully I'm not dumping it anyway. I'm recovering it, so maybe I wouldn't have a problem there. But uh, I was always concerned about working around a flammable gas, and certainly one that part of the components are inside the house. So. Uh, if this stuff actually proves to be no real hazard, I guess it's okay. And this price should come down, but my bet is that price is not going to do much but drop by half. So uh, I know all the automotive guys, they got to go out and buy a bunch of new equipment just to run that stupid stuff. And then there will be another one in 10 years. or eight years or five years that supposedly is better. I'm still waiting for the perfect refrigerant. Uh, so far, with a lot of money behind it and a lot of research behind it, there is nothing. This is probably it for automotive. Uh, well, you see it in uh, residential systems. I don't think you'll see it in residential systems until the price goes down. Because uh, residential and commercial systems, we use a lot more volume. And at this $55 a pound price point, puts it up to, uh, you know, R22 levels cost. R22, of course, is artificially uh, high-priced due to the taxes. But uh, anyway, that's what's out there now. Uh, if you have any thoughts on it, you got any ideas that I haven't thought of, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. I'd like to see a discussion on this stuff and see what you think. Anyway, that's it on this one.